So I've had a request for another limiting chord process question or definition of a derivative or using first principles of calculus or first principles of differentiation, whatever you want to call it. Specifically, this y equals 1 over x squared with respect to x. Now, let's just go over what this first principles thing is again. So I'll just, if we have a function, let it be y equals some sort of function of x, First principle says that our derivative of this, or y prime, is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of the function at x plus some value minus the function evaluated at the original x value, all divided by difference between the two values where the function is evaluated. So basically what we can do is by using this algorithm here we can find the derivative. Now there are mechanical ways of finding the derivative where you can just take the index multiply it by the front blah 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 but this here basically underlines what you're doing in that mechanical process. What you're doing is you're finding a chord between two parts of a function, let it be this part and this part, you're finding a straight line that connects the two, and what you've got here is you've got some distance h between them, and then what you're doing is you're making, because you're creating this limit as h approaches zero, you're making h smaller and smaller and smaller so the points get closer and closer together, until you get some point which becomes a tangent to the line. So basically that's what we're doing with this idea here. So you, hopefully that sort of gives you a little bit of an insight so you're not just monkey see, monkey do. Okay, so let's get back to it. So specifically this question here. So we have this function of x is one over x squared. So let's first of all enter it in. If we have one over x squared as our function, the derivative of this y prime is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of. Now the function at x plus h is going to be 1 over x plus h all squared and we're going to take away the original function 1 over x squared and that's all going to be divided by h. Cool. So basically what we have to do here is we're going to have to rearrange this or use algebra to rearrange this to simplify it till we can actually take a limit that is actually has some meaning to us. So let, well, first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, um, I mean, well I'm going to create, I'm going to make these two bases the same. So, I'm going to, so I can have a common factor and I can like join these two fractions at the top together. So my base for the top, so let's just quickly write, is equal to the limit. Now if you've got a pretty chill teacher, they won't sort of necessarily mark you down for not writing this at every single step, but if your teacher is anything like mine in high school, they will definitely just cross the entire question out. That's all your hard work down the drain. So just, you know, double check, make sure you write limit as h approaches zero in every single part of this problem until you actually take the limit, obviously. So I'm going to multiply the two bases together so I can have a common base. So I'm going to have x squared times x plus h, all squared. And as a result, I'm going to have on the top, this had to be multiplied by this. So I'm going to have x squared subtract x plus h, all squared. Now this is all going to be divided by h as well. Cool. So what I'm going to do in the next part, now there are multiple ways we can get to the end of this. I'm just giving you the way that I find the easiest and I'm going to combine multiple steps into one so I don't have to keep running the limit as h approaches zero, it just becomes a bit of a nuisance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this h with the denominator down here and I'm going to multiply out this bracket here paying special attention because this is a minus here. So I'm going to keep these in a big bracket, but this binomial here, I'm going to just make sure that we know that it's being minus by x squared. So what that means is, if I put that into maths, I'm going to go, this is x squared minus, I'm going to put a 
bracket, multiply out that binomial, and then I'm going to divide all that, I'll close the bracket, I'm going to divide all that by x squared, I'm going to take the h up, and then I've got Now, at the moment, that's looking pretty rank. So let's. what we're going to do now is we're going to combine, we're going to actually take away this from this. So this is now equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of x squared take x squared is nothing. Then we've got minus 2xh minus h squared all divided by x squared h x plus h all squared. Cool. Now, what I need to do here is I'm still, again, what I've been doing the whole time is I need to factorize this or factorize, or I need to simplify this. Now, I need to simplify it. The way that I can do this is through factorization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize the top by h. So I'm going to have the limit. Almost forgot it. As h approaches 0 of h minus 2x take h all divided by x squared h x plus h all squared. Sorry about my handwriting. Now, because I've done that factorization now, I can cancel out those two h's and I'll be left with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2x minus h over x squared x plus h all squared. Now, I've got to a point here which I feel comfortable taking the limit as h approaches 0. So I'm going to take the limit and I'm going to sort of write a statement which suggests that I'm taking the limit. So I'm going to say as h approaches 0, comma, negative 2x minus h divided by x squared x plus h approaches. Now let's figure this out. The h is going to approach 0, so we can effectively call that 0. So on the top, we're just going to have negative 2x. And on the bottom, we're going to have x squared, that's not going to be affected, times, that's x plus 0 squared, so it's just times x squared, which is equal to negative 2x over x to the power of 4. Now what I can do is I can do a little bit of cancelling here. I can go, well, I'm going to cancel that x with one of those powers. And so what I'm left with is I'm left with negative 2 over x to the power of 3. So what I've confinedly write is I can say, therefore, y dash, or the derivative, is equal to negative 2 divided by x cubed. Okay. So, and that's our solution. So basically, let's just quickly run through what we, what we did in this entire question. What we have to remember is first we have to remember that this is the actual definition of a derivative. So when it says use first principles, we know that we have to use this algorithm here. The next thing we have to do is we have to input the function correctly. Now, 1 over x squared, so what we do is if when we have an x plus h, we just substitute x for x plus h. So this, the function has the same look to it, it just has an x plus h where x is. The next part is actually just making sure that you do all of your algebra without mistakes and you continue to factorize and all that you're going to need to do is practice these. Just this comes with practice, being able to go through here without any mistakes. Now, what you then have to do is once you've got to a point where basically the way I see it is when you take the limit as h approaches 0, you want to make sure that the denominator is not going to become meaningless. So you can't have a h outside of a bracket where it will make the denominator equal 0 because then the uh, rational function is not just is meaningless. So I just make sure, so here, here, sorry, 
if the h, if we took the limit here, this h would go to zero, which would make the entire denominator zero. So that wouldn't work for us. So once I got rid of it by factorizing, this h going to zero doesn't really matter because it's being plused to x before it's squared. So as a result, it's just, just going to be when h is zero, it's just going to be x squared rather than x plus h squared. So this here can be, um, the limit can be taken. So I took the limit and I expressed it as a statement. And then once I'd done that, I did a little bit more algebra, a little bit more simplification until I came out with my final derivative, which is uh, there. After that, you've got to make sure that you write down, after you've done all this work, make sure that you write down that the derivative is equal to what you found, just so the teacher is well aware that, you know, you got the question right. You need to be able to get full marks for questions like this because they they take a lot of effort. So, you know, I hope this video helped, guys. I've done so many videos on this limiting chord process on this channel. So if you need a different one, if you look for it, it could be there. If you need another one done, if this one isn't enough explanation, give me your specific example that you would like and I'll have a decent shot at trying to explain it. If this video perhaps helped, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it, and I will see all you guys next time.